I'm convinced that at this point, the only reason this franchise still exists is because somebody somewhere still owes Vin Diesel a 10 second car. What's up? I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com and you're going to click that subscribe button because I'm, I am the sexiest blind film critic on YouTube. Uh, that was a title given to me by nobody, but uh, I'm accepting it and owning that. So I'm also wearing a Fast and Furious t-shirt for a Fast X review. I mean, it just really goes to show the length of my pop culture TV shirt <laughs> t-shirt collection. So yeah, this is Fast X, guys. Um, I've, I generally like the Fast and Furious franchise. I did not like F9. I was like, no, 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 we are not driving into space. No, 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 calm down, stop, stop. Oh, no, 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 they're doing it. They're sending Luda and, and, and Tyrese into space. God damn it. Anyway, so F9 was awful. Um, I hated it. <laughs> it's the only one in the franchise where I just like, I don't know. I just so, so hated that film. <laughs> I thought it was so stupid. They were like, let's keep going over the top. And it's like, at some point, there's only just so over the top you can get. This film struggles with that. It struggles with the desire to go over the top. But it's available on Peacock with audio description. So if you're like me, if you're blind and you want to check out the Fast and Furious franchise, it's there for you to check, check it out. Anyway... Um, yeah, I have seen, uh, I saw at least all the way through Furious 7 with Sight, so I'm pretty, pretty well lodged into this franchise, know what these characters look like, and, uh, conceptually I understand what some others look like because I know what the actors look like, so this is not that challenging of a franchise for me, it's also not necessarily the most intelligent franchise, so it's pretty easy. Um, and if you really want to have fun, make sure you, you get a, a bottle of liquor and just every time they say the word family, just take a shot. Um, you might have liver damage, but you can blame it on, <laughs> you can blame it on uh, Vin Diesel and, and the Fast and the Fur Furious franchise. Um, I don't know how this happens, but this film has an insane cast. I mean, this film's... <laughs> I, I'm i actually really excited for the next Fast film because I don't know who is going to be in it. I have no idea. I don't even know who's alive or dead. To be totally honest, there are some people in this film. Because there's a problem with the Fast and Furious films is that people just keep popping up from the dead. They're like, I know you saw my head explode, but guess what, guys? I'm back. You know? <laughs> it's like... Uh, there are characters who I think died, but hey... If they showed up in the next film, would it surprise me? Absolutely not. Not one bit. Not one bit at all. Let's face it. When we saw, what, Tokyo Drift, uh, everybody was like, Kang's dead. That's, that's, he's dead. They killed Kang. But they didn't kill Kang. And now he's just, like, walking around the film. <laughs> he's just like, what's up, guys? I'm still here. And it's, hi. How are you? <laughs> um... It's it's almost like a rite of passage in this franchise. Like your character, you know, must have been mysteriously killed off at some point, only for you to be resurrected. So, yeah, everybody's in this. Um, this cast is so ridiculous that when I got to the end credits and it was listing off the names, it was like it did like three whiffs and then three ands. <laughs> It was just like, it was like with blank, with blank, with blank, and blank, and blank, and blank. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god. Everybody was contractually obligated to be a with or an and at the end of credits. When you have that many people who are listed as with or and, it kind of loses the effect. <laughs> but let's do a quick rundown. We've got Vin Diesel is back as Dominic Toretto, the head of the family. And uh, we've got some other franchise regulars, as you might expect, are back. We see, obviously, Michelle Rodriguez is back as Letty. 
We've got Tyrese back. We've got Luda. We've got uh, Natalie Emmanuel is back. Obviously, this is sort of like you know, like the core family. They managed to uh, find Jordana Brewster, who has acquired a very specific set of skills since uh, being uh, Bubbly Mia in the first film. She now has she uh, while while being off with with Brian O'Connor that we never get to see is uh, yeah she's uh, she's fighting now so cool um, so she pops up in this film what we of course get a repeat performance from John Cena because that was the whole point of adding him to the franchise is we got to get more of that brotherly relationship between Vin Diesel and John Cena which I guess means also sisterly relationship between Jordana Brewster and John Cena. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Jason Statham is back in this. Um, Scott Eastwood, I don't know if you guys remember, but he's in this franchise. He comes back as young nobody, uh, cause, uh, cause, uh, sadly Kurt Russell is not in this, so... He didn't come back. But Scott Eastwood is t has taken over as young nobody. Uh, Brie Larson plays his sister. Uh, spoiler alert on that one. But uh, that is that is who Brie Larson comes in as, is one of the new characters. Um, and then, unfortunately, Brie Larson has to answer to a higher power. And that higher power is Alan Richson, who is playing this uh, the new head of whatever clandestine organization they all supposedly work for um cause Mr. Nobody's not around and and uh, Alan is there to to deliver some really you know strong dialogue about how he doesn't put up with shit uh and kicks ass it's, it's some good stuff um Helen Mirren came back because She's poor, um, so if you can find her GoFundMe, uh, that would keep Helen Mirren from having to do films like this, feel free uh, to donate to Helen Mirren to keep her... <laughs> you know Vin Diesel's worked with both Judy Dench and Helen Mirren? Isn't that weird? <laughs> he got Judy Dench to do Chronicles of Riddick, and now he's got Helen Mirren in the Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> And that's without, that's not even counting Saving Private Ryan. That's just him doing his normal shit. He's managed to pull out two of the greatest actresses working. Like, still alive. Anyway, um, Charlize Theron is back. Or Theron. Charlize Theron is back as Cypher. Um, yes. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but she's, she's here. Um, and we've still got, uh, we have to have a villain. So, Jason Momoa, welcome back. Uh, welcome, welcome to the franchise, Jason, as this flashy, really over-the-top villain. I mean, this is, really, this is really a great villain for uh, the, the, the 10th film of the franchise because he's so just beats to his own drum. He's so over-the-top, and they sell the fact that he feels... Uh, like he somehow is better than everybody, and it's not we, it's not really enumerated how how he knows how to do all this stuff, but again, his past ties in. Everybody is always tied in. This is very incestual. There's always like somebody from somewhere who is somebody's kid or uncle or brother or sister or grandfather or niece or nephew or neighbor or somebody that is coming back and wants revenge. <laughs> it's always. That is the franchise. That is what the franchise has become. So Jason Momoa is loosely tied to a character that was brought up in Fast Five. So we get, you know, uh, mentions to Fast Five. Um, we do get... Uh, actually, Alan Richson does a pretty solid rundown of the entire franchise. <laughs> So just in case you are jumping into Fast X, he does a little uh, overview of all of the shenanigans of the of the Toretto family. Um, probably the most shocking cameo, though, is Rita Moreno. <laughs> I'm not really sure why Rita Moreno was in this, but 
she is adding to the list of absurd people that Vin Diesel has gotten to work with. Um, I'm expecting Kate Winslet in Fast 11 or something like that. I'm just expecting, hey, you know, go for broke. Maggie Smith in, in Fast 11. I don't know, but uh, it's just going to be Brian Cox, maybe. I, like, it's going to be somebody who just feels so totally like, why are you in this? Like, why? Oh, because Vin Diesel has... I'm sure the budget was like two hundred million, and at least a hundred million of that just went to paychecks. <laughs> it's just too many people in this film for it to not go to paychecks. Um, it's 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 a lot, and it has a really hard time balancing all those people. Although a lot of them only pop in for like a scene or two, and in addition to uh, that, there are also some smaller characters. There's a uh, a character that is the sister of the girl that Vin Diesel slept with and died. I can't remember all their names. Good God, there's a lot of people in this franchise. But he goes down to Rio. I think her name's Isabel. So Isabel is in this. And then there's some other guy down in Rio that he's apparently friends with. There are references to that Los Bandoleros short that they made. Uh, that I don't think anybody even remembers. But they made a little Fast and Furious short called Los Bandoleros. There are definitely references to Los Bandoleros in this. Um, this is the most... I almost have to applaud them for being able to... There are references to the fact that Tyrese went into space. People keep calling him an astronaut. So, I mean, this film absolutely... Whoever writes the script for this... I know we think these films are flashy and stupid, but we do not give them enough props because they have to they have to go through the previous nine films and pull out all of these obscure references <laughs> in order to like make this kind of stuff happen. They have to be able to reference these characters and these events and and figure out how to intertwine these characters to like some film from the past. Um I was a little disappointed that Lucas Black did not come back or Bow Wow from Tokyo Drift. They continue to just sort of ignore the Tokyo Drift characters. That was disappointing to me. Um, there are some characters who come back at the end that I won't spoil for you. So there's one that comes back right at the end of the film. And then there's one that there is an, uh, I would say, a, some people call them mid credit sequences because they do like the, the first part of the credits before they do the long scroll and then they throw in a scene so there's a mid credit sequence you're going to want to make sure you stay through the first part of the credits so you can see an obvious reference to who else will be back for uh fast 11 whatever they're calling it i don't know uh, it's over the top the action sequences are absolutely insane the plot makes no sense uh, Jason Momoa is seeking revenge, but he wants to do it in the most outlandish fashion possible. Uh, there is a kid here. Uh, they call him Little B. And I thought he was delightful. It was a delightful child performance. And uh, he's a lot older. I don't know how much time has passed, but I feel like the last time I saw him, he was a baby. And now he's, like, easily eight. Safely at least eight. Um maybe 10 so um he was he was really functioning pretty well so yeah uh it's it's a film full of a lot of major stunts it likes its huge set pieces much like the mission impossible universe does where they like to give you this big stunt except for fast x is basically just a continuous big stunt it's just stunt after stunt after stunt or crazy plot twist or bizarre scenario or fight sequence or um, just something, uh, you know, it just it doesn't stop. It was like two hours and 20 minutes of, uh, you know, the only times that we stop are for a slight exposition to explain a character or um, for Dante, which is Jason Momoa's character, to you know, be able to uh, do his Bond villain thing where they overshare uh, <laughs> they overshare their plans except for Dante always feels like he can, he feels like the kind of villain that overshares and then still gets away with it 
You know, it's not one of those like, well, I guess I could tell you, Mr. Bond, and then they Bond breaks out and kills the villain. But yeah, he just I don't know, Dante just legitimately feels like somehow they didn't even know he existed and somehow he decided to rule the entire world and then come down on Dom. So I mean there are scenes in here that are ridiculous because he's got them all planned out. Um there's some mercenaries that are you know, hired to go after him, but uh apparently they all have families and he knew every single mercenary. And he, so he had somebody uh, in each one of their families that had been taken hostage. And he quickly ended up flipping the mercenaries. And I was like, that's a lot of work. I mean, that's, that's an insane amount of work to figure out who each one of those mercenaries are and then to send somebody to each one of those houses so you can immediately collect an army of mercenaries. Like, what? <laughs> First of all, he has to have, like, unlimited resources. They don't really, like, talk about how rich Dante is. But he just seems like he just, I don't know, has some sort of infinite wallet. It just it pays for everything. Because he's constantly coming in with things that would be massively expensive. I am concerned that kids might think cars can do this. There's nothing in this film that cars can actually do. Um... This is one of those kids don't try this at home because you'll die uh, type of films. The things that they have some of these cars do. Vin Diesel's car drops out of a plane, lands on two other cars, and then drives away. <laughs> like, it just, it's still workable. It's, it's still functioning. It's like, what in the fuck just happened? It is, it makes no sense. Um, but I gotta say, I appreciated that nobody went into space. Nobody went to the center of the earth. Uh, there weren't any flying cars or uh, people swimming, like going deep sea diving in a, <laughs> in a Mustang. You know, it, was, it felt actually like they backtracked. They were like, listen, okay, so we got some flag for that going into space thing. So we're going to go up to that limit, but we're not going to surpass it this time. We're just going to go, <laughs> we're going to get as crazy as possible, but we're not sending anybody into space or into any other ridiculous locations. You know, Dom does not have to drive a bomb into a volcano or anything like that. <laughs> There's nothing that is, that is so absolutely ridiculous that you just can't function anymore. Um... And I think that's what made me like Fast X more than F9. F9 to me is just like a, a massive step down. I also, there's this really kind of nice moment. I, I It's hard to talk about good direction in these films, but this is uh, Louis Leterrier, who he has been around the block with action films before. I think this is his first uh, foray into the Fast franchise, but he does a nice job. Uh, in the score, at the beginning, there's a nice little, if you catch it, You'll be like, oh, it's a nice moment. But they work to see you again into uh, into the beginning ish, uh, not 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 the beginning beginning, but first, you know, fifteen minutes of the film. They've got "See You Again" playing in the background. They're not singing it; it's like an instrumental of "See You Again." And I was like, oh, this is that's nice. We're tying that back in. We're going to really just pull on the heartstrings in this film, I can tell. Um, yeah, uh, maybe people are dead. I don't know. This film might have killed off some characters. There are some characters that just kind of disappear for a while and they go missing. And then we don't really find out what happened to them. But uh, as many people pointed out, this film kind of ends on a weird cliffhanger note where obviously there's going to be Fast 11. I didn't think it was that cliffhanger -y. I feel like it kind of, kind of did end a little bit. It just kind of sets up 11. It assumes there will be 11, is what I'm saying. Like, this is not like some film where, um, it ends on some weird cliffhanger where, uh, it really feels like the next thing that should have happened. Like, we're going to open up at, in 11 at this exact moment in time 
and pick up on it. It's not like a season finale, you know. Um, it does feel like it has a little bit more of a concise ending than people have given it credit for. Um, I think the main goal of the film is achieved. But there is a suggestion that there is more to come in the next film. And because of that, uh, they do make it a point to have some interesting appearances right at the end of the film. So to, to let people know this franchise has a ridiculous amount of money to be able to pay people to come back. So, yeah. Um... I got nothing else on this. It's a fast, it's a fast film, so you're, this is either going to be your film or not. If you're thinking about jumping in on Fast Ten, uh, or if you didn't like the previous nine films and you think Fast Ten is going to somehow revolutionize your life, it's not. This is. I think they've accepted the fact how ridiculous the franchise is, um, especially through Alan Richardson's monologue, how he just kind of talks about how they started out a street and then they elevated to this and elevated to this and elevated to this. He has, he has a great line. He was like, nobody saves the world by driving a car anymore. Like, you know, he's talking about how there are all these drones and everything and tech and we've replaced stuff with AI and, and, uh, how they're sort of phasing these people out. But Dom, Dom's like, I drive a car really, really well. And that can never be phased out. So he drives this car really good. Cool. Um, the audio description here was good. Uh, unfortunately, it's on Peacock. So after that uh, mid credit sequence, uh, Peacock immediately tried to throw me into something else. And uh, I, I don't know who did the narration here. I didn't even recognize the voice, to be honest. So... I felt like I got everything, though. Uh, I feel like the fact that I don't know whether or not people lived or died simply is just because this film has such a massive cast that it becomes really hard to kind of follow that, you know? Uh, and the film doesn't stick to deaths. The series is known for killing people off and showing their death and then being like, guess what? Not dead. <laughs> you know, like that person you thought was dead not dead so um the people in this film that i have a question mark on are, are question marks and will remain question marks i may have seen their death but i also may not have because in in, in 11 they may show that they jumped out of the car just a second before and we just didn't catch it you know or something <laughs> you know it's just that's just how it is. That's how the franchise is. So it's not because of, of the audio description that I don't know whether or not people lived or died. It's because I don't trust this series to ever actually kill anybody off. So it's about family, after all. And you don't kill off family. So that's it. Um, I've, overall, I thought it was pretty worthwhile. For a, fast, for a fast film, for an action film, especially if you like action sequences, if you like your... If you like your action sequences really over the top and nonsensical, I mean, totally nonsensical, no basis in reality, um, just, but kind of cool, you know, like that could never happen, but it's happening in a film, so, wow, that seems fun, you know? <laughs> if you like your films like that, this is going to be up your alley. If you like previous Fast films... I think they course corrected a little bit from F9. Uh, but it's not my favorite fast film. But eh, yeah, we moved it, We moved back in the right direction. We're moving the needle. So I'm going to give Fast X B minus. Um, it's not it's not in the bottom of my of the franchise for me, and and it's also not in the top. So there are more entertaining, better written fast films that have stunts that make sense or make more sense at least didn't they use parachutes at least the one time when I jumped out of a plane <laughs> this time Dom just kind of like fuck parachutes <laughs> I got this <laughs> my kid is in danger my car will be able to fall from his height <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. But, um, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I do have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on X. Uh, Instagram and threads at Mac the Movie Guy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org and let you know what is audio description where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org, the adna.org and let you know who is narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I will review something else for you guys and see you again. It's been a long day without you, my friend. But I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. That's what you get if you stay to the end of my video. Yeah. <laughs>